So let's go ahead and get started. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about topographic surveying and mapping. So first, what does, what does it mean by maps? So maps are abstract representation of physical features. So physical features is going to be represented. Of course, the, the, these physical features is going to be a portion of the Earth's surface, right? So these physical features graphically displayed on planar surface. So in maps, we are going to represent physical features on planar surface. And of course, this physical feature is going to be a part of the Earth's surface. And a map portrays three kinds of information about geographic features. We are going to represent the geographic features and uh, by using map, we'll be able to know three kinds of information about geographic features. First, we'll be able to know the location and extent of the feature. Second, we are going to know the attributes of the feature, the characteristics of, uh, of the feature. And finally, we are going to know the relationship of the feature to other features. Okay, so using map, we'll be able to represent physical features, right? And also, we'll be able to know the location and the extent of these features and the characteristics of these features and the relation with other features. And of course, we are going to use papers. We have different uh, uh, drawing size. We have A4, A3, A2, A1, A and A0, and so on. We use these papers in order to draw maps. And of course, what we need to have uh, a, a board length and paper length and the drafting is going to be uh, here. And in order to draw a map, I need to have map scale. Why? Because features, if I'm, I will not be able to draw the features with their actual size. They are too big. And I have a small uh, paper size, right? This paper is very small and the features on Earth uh, is very big, right? So I need to have a scale. So using a scale, which means that I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to make reduction. And this reduction is necessarily to display a representation of Earth's surface on a map. And what does it mean by scale? The scale of, of the map uh, refers to a ratio of a distance on a map over corresponding distance on the ground. So the, 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 the ratio between distance on map over distance on the ground represent the scale. And map scale is the relation between this dimensions of a map and dimension of the Earth. We are going to relate the dimension of the map and dimension of the Earth, since we are not able to represent the actual size of the physical features. So the 1 over S represent distance, 1 represent distance on the map, and S represent distance on the ground. For example, let's say that uh, two centimeter distance on the map correspond to one kilo uh, kilometer distance on the ground. Assume that you draw two cent centimeter on the map, and you you mean by this this two centimeter is going to represent one kilometer on the ground. Then the map scale is going to be calculated as follows. We said that the map scale is the distance on the map over the distance on the ground. So now the distance on the map is two centimeter. And this two centimeter is going to represent one kilometer on the ground. Then I'm going to convert the one kilometer to be centimeters. Then I'm going to have 100,000 centimeter. Then I'm going to normalize this to be one. So I'm going to divide by one, by two and by two. So that this one is going to be one and this one represent S. And here, after I divide by 2 and by 2, this one came out to be uh, uh, 50, 100,000. Okay, and we're going to draw it like 1 and uh, S. So this one represents S. So the scale is going to be determined like that. So in order to produce a map, I have components for the map. Now we learn how to, to make the scale, right? 
and we talked about the importance of map scale. Now, in order to produce a map, I am going to have certain components. I'm going to have a title, for example, here, San Barbara, the title of the map. It could be Prince Mogren University. Okay, and I need to have the scale. We already talked about how to produce the scale. And the scale also it could be like that. We call this bar scale. So the distance from here to here represent one kilometer. So for example, the distance from here to here is one kilometer. So I can use a bar scale instead of this scale. And also I'm going to have names, names for the features like Lake Eric. Okay. So also I'm going to have names inside the, the map. And also I'm going to have grids. This one is grids, vertical and horizontal. This is going to give me the sense of the distance. So here I have uh, uh, 89 and here I have 80. The distance from here to here is one kilometer. Also, I have samples. Like you can see here, we have samples. So this, this color refer to uh, a road. And this one represent to, to sharp shrub. And this one refer to lake. Okay, so here I have we have a lake and so on. And also we are going to have the north direction. And also I'm going to have legend. The legend and the keys is going to uh, help us to identify the physical features. So we have title, grid lines, we have direction indicator, we have symbols and legends, and also we have name of features. And of course we are going to have scale. So the maps could be classified according to the purpose. So first we have uh, cadastral maps. This one help us to show the boundaries, ownerships of land and all information related to parcels. So we are going to see this in case that I need to uh, locate uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, boundaries and the ownerships of lands. Also, we have thematic maps. A thematic map also called statistical or special purpose map. This, this type of map display the special pattern of a theme or series of attributes. And these maps are prepared to serve some special purposes with reference to a specific theme or attributes. Example for that, we have geologic maps. This show rock features earth crust and so on also we have weather maps this show weather conditions and also we have vegetation map this shows variety of vegetation and also we have political maps this shows boundaries between different states for example and also we have to, uh, tourist map this show tourist important features and finally, we have topographic maps. It's also called contour maps or topo maps. And these maps show topography of land contours. Here we are going to have contours lines. Okay. And these maps usually show not only contour, contour uh, lines, but also any significant stream or other body of water. So here we, if we have body of water like that, or we have forest cover, also it could be displayed in the uh, uh, turbo maps. So what is the contour lines? We say that mainly the uh, turbo maps consist of contour lines. So what does it mean by a contour line? Uh, the contour line is simply a, a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line that passes through points of equal elevation on the map. So the contour lines look like that. These are horizontal lines, which means that it's going, it's going to be drawn on horizontal uh, uh, plane like this. So this or this contour line is going to pass through points of equal elevation, which means that the elevation of this point is similar to that point, similar to that point, is equal to that point and equal to that point. The contour here is going to also pass through 
uh, points of equal elevation and so on. So when you see contour lines, that means this line passes through points of equal elevation. And this, these lines are made generally, okay? It's, just, it's not real. These contour lines are not real, okay? So actually, you are not going to see these lines on the ground. They are drawn on the paper to give the impression of a third dimension. So the purpose of these lines in order to have the feeling of a third dimension, the Z dimension, because features like this cannot be presented on a paper, right? You cannot draw these features on a paper. So instead of instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, drawing this like that which is not possible we are gonna draw it in term of contour contour lines okay these contour lines can give us the impression of this uh, third dimension okay later on we are going to understand uh, how these contour lines is going to represent mountains and valleys Okay, so the uh, Tobo maps mainly consist of contour lines, and these lines passes through uh, points of equal elevation. So now, how to read topographic maps? Like you can see here, this map look like something difficult to understand, right? But here I'm gonna walk you through how to read topographic maps. The first information that we need to know. The contours lines are lines connect points of equal elevation. So if this one is a contour line, so the elevation of this point is equal to that point, is equal to that point, is equal to that point, and so on. Is the first information we need to understand. Okay? And also, these contours lines are going to be labeled with number. For example, this line here, labeled with a number. This number represents the elevation of these points. The contour lines passes through uh, uh, points of equal elevation. And the number here is the elevation of these points. So the elevation of this point is 50. The elevation of this point is 50. The elevation of this point is 100. The elevation of that point is 100. The elevation of this point is 50. The elevation and so on. So contour lines connect the points of equal elevation. And usually they are labeled with numbers. Also, we need to understand what does it mean by contour interval. So here also we have contour map, right? Here we have this uh, contour line and this one. And we understand in the first step, the elevation of that point is going to be 20 the elevation of this point also is going to be 20 because this contour line labeled with 20. Then here we have another contour line labeled with 40 and here another one labeled with 60. The difference between two consecutive lines is the contour interval. So the contour interval is the difference between heights between two consecutive lines. So the difference between this line and this line is 20. Between this line and that line is 20. Between this line and that line is 20. So the contour interval on this map is 20. And the contour interval is constant for the whole map. The contour interval is constant for the whole map. So what is the importance of the contour interval? Because sometimes it's not practical to label each and every contour because we are going to have too much information. So, for example, I'm going to label only this contour and that contour. I'm not going to write anything here. But if you know the contour interval, then you will be able to know that this contour is a 40 height and this contour is 60 height because you know the contour interval. So this is the importance of the contour interval. Then 
the 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 definition for the contour event is the change in elevation in between two consecutive contours lines, and they usually listed in the key or the legend, in the legend or the key of the map. For example, in this map, it says that the contour interval is 40 feet. Okay, so usually it's going to be labeled in the uh, or it's going to be listed in the key and the legend. Yeah. So when we say that the uh, the contour line is la labeled with zero, if, if it's labeled with zero, that means that contour line at sea level. When the contour line at the sea level is going to be level with zero. If you have more than zero, that means you are above uh, sea level. If, if it's the contour line is zero, that means you are standing at the sea level. If it's less than zero, it means that I'm below the sea level. Which means that the contour line at the coastline, here is the coastline, is going to be zero. Also, we have the index contour line. Remember, we are not going to label each and every contour with number because we are going to have too much information. So we are going only to label the index contour line. And these usually they are going to be darker and thicker. So here we only we have this one and that one. These contour lines are darker and thicker. We call this index contour line. Again, we say that we need we, we don't want to put too much information. And with the help with the uh, contour interval, we'll be able to know the uh, level of that uh, of that line, right? It's going to be written in the key or in the legend. And also, even if it's not written, you can know the interval right, line. For example, this one is index contour, and this one also is another index contour. I'm going to uh, uh, count the number of the uh, uh, contours here between this one and that one. We are going to have one, two, three, four, five. Five contours from here to there. Okay? And also, I need to know the difference in height. The difference in height is 100, right? Then the interval is going to be 100 over 5, which is 20. So the contour interval is 20, which means that the height of this contour is going to be 720, 740, 780, uh, 720, 740, 760 and 780. Okay. So we are going to label only the index contour line. They are usually thicker and uh, they are usually darker. Okay. So we want we don't want to put too much information in the contour. So every fourth or fifth line is thicker or bolder. Okay, here also thicker or bolder. And the line is labeled with the elevation. Usually the index contour line labeled with elevation, like this one and that one. Okay, it's going to help us to read the map and help us not to put too much information. In this map here, index contour lines are placed every 50 units on this map. So every 50 units, we have contour or index contour line. Also, through the topographic map, we'll be able whether we have hills and mountains. Whenever we see close contours in a circle or elliptical or oval shape, it's indication for hills and mountains. So if you find contours in a circular and closed shape like this, it's indication for hill and mountains. So whenever we find circular contours like this one, it's indication for uh, uh, hill and mountains. So for example here, this one, this uh, uh, circular contours indication for, for a mountain, and this one could be represented uh, by uh, elevation. So 
later on we are going to talk about how to do, uh, to draw elevation for from uh, a contour a circular contour line but what we need to know in case that we have hill or mountain also we'll be able to know whether we have a steep slope or gentle slope so when these lines are close to each other it's indication that we have a steep slope so when this line close to each other like that it means that i have a steep slope and when they are apart or away from each other it's indication for gentle slope that means the slope here is not going to be gentle okay so also uh, we will be able to know whether the slope of the mountain is steep or gentle also we'll be able to identify the depressions okay uh, depression that mean uh, or the depression is opposite to to a hill okay so like you can see here here we have a mountain but at the middle of the mountain we have depression so how to identify such feature so the the, the depression is similar to the uh, to the hill we are going to have uh, uh, circu circu circular uh, contours like this one but this one is going to be uh, they are going to be a uh, uh, mark with hash marks okay so here we are going to have this hash mark we call this a uh, hatchures line so when we find these marks it's indication for depression so these lines are going to be circular and with these hash marks so this indication for depression okay so depressions the opposite of hill is a depression which is the low point on the ground and they are represented by hatchures lines so in order to differentiate between a, dif a, dif a depression and between a hill this one it has hash marks like that okay so here we have 600 800 1000 1200 then the first the first line in the depression is going to have the same elevation like the briefest line so if this one is 120 the first line is going to be also 120 then here we we decreasing the, the 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 elevation in the depression we are going to decrease the elevation so here we have 600 then we have 800 here we have 1200 here we have 1000 and if we have another line it's going to be like 800 and so on so in the case of the, the depression the the first line is going to be similar like the briefest contour line and then we are going to go down the number is going to be down so if we are going to take this one here and put it there then the area here this area okay this area like uh, here is going to be uh, uh, the area outside this is going to be more than 100 and uh, 1200 this area between this one and that one is going to be between 1200 and 1000 the area here while the area or while the height here is going to be less than 1000 okay so the height here is going to be between 1200 and 1000 and the height here is going to be less than 1000 so we need to understand this or we are going to ask this question does the elevation goes up or down when we see Hatchur line if you see Hatchur line like this one then the, uh, the the elevation is going to go up or down of course it's going to be down also the first depression line is going to be the elevation as the closest contour line here the closest contour line is this one then the first depression line is going to be the same as the elevation uh, of the closest contour line which is this one 
okay the, the two important things we need to know about the depressions so this one is going to be the same elevation as the closest contour line also through the uh, topographic map will be able to know the direction of uh, if you have a stream of water then or a body of water you will be able to know the uh, direction of, of that streams so we need to we know we know this streams always flow downhill right not uphill which means that the streams always flow from higher elevation to lower elevation from higher elevation to lower elevation for example assume this white line here is the river okay and the uh, this contour line is labeled with 400 and this contour line is labeled with 500 then we need to know the direction of that stream so the streams always flow downhill from high elevation to lower elevation because of the gravity of course so the direction of that river here is going to be uh, to the north in this direction okay so also with the to to topographic map we'll be able to know the direction of streams so the direction is going to be like that from the higher elevation towards the lower elevation also here here we have 5600 is the index contour line and here also another index contour line and this one is 5800 then the uh, uh, the direction of the stream is going to be from higher elevation to lower elevation so the direction is going to be to the south the direction of that stream in case that the uh, the the elevation is not known for you let's see that i give you this part of this uh, topographic map and you cannot know the uh, the location of the higher elevation and the lower elevation because here i have only this index contour so i cannot be able to know whether the higher elevation is here or there even if you don't know this you will be able to tell the direction of the stream how when you have a stream then the contour line is going to intersect with the stream in uh, uh, v shape okay so here we are going to have a v shape v shape v shape v shape like that okay so when you have a stream then the uh, contour line is going to intersect with the stream like that okay so this just like an arrow they are pointing to this direction right then the direction of the stream is going to be opposite to that direction so here the stream uh, uh, the direction of the stream is just like that right or this this v shape direct to this direction then the real direction of the stream is going to be opposite to that direction which means that in this direction so the direction is going to be like that opposite to this this v-shape direct to this and the real direction of the stream is going to be opposite to this one so even if you don't know the higher elevation and the lower elevation we can tell the direction of this stream so contour lines point to the opposite direction of the uh, stream is flowing also we can tell the maximum possible elevation of a hill so we talked about how to identify a hill or a mountain we say that when we are going to find circular uh, contours lines it's indication for a hill so also we'll be able to know the maximum possible elevation of a hill so how to do that here let's say that here is the uh, tobo maps and we have circ circular uh, contour lines so it means that i have uh, a mountain here so how to tell about the highest possible elevation first we need to look at the highest contour line in this map 
the highest contour line is 40, right? Is the highest contour line. Then I need to pretend uh, to pretend we have one more. We are going to assume that what will happen if we are going to have another contour line. If we are going to have another contour line, it's going to be labeled with 50 because the uh, contour interval is 10, right? So if we are going to have another contour line, it's going to be labeled with 50. Since we don't have a contour line labeled with 50, that means we, we, we are not going to reach to 50 level, right? So the height here is going to be more than 40 and less than 50. And the maximum possible is going to be 50 minus 1. I'm going to subtract 1 from 50. So uh, 50 minus 1 is 49. This is the maximum possible elevation of this hill, right? Of course, we know for sure the, 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 the height here is going to be between 40 and 50. But the maximum possible one is 40. Nine. Also, I will be able to know the minimum possible elevation of a depression. Remember, we uh, I, I told you about how to identify depression. Depression is similar to the hill. We are going to have circular contour lines, but with 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 a hash mark. Here we have hash mark like that. So it's indication for for a dep depression. So how to know the minimum elevation of a depression? So first, we are going to follow these steps. We need to count down the contour lines using the contour interval. So here, how to know the elevation of, of, of these contours? So first, I need to know the uh, contour uh, interval. OK, I need to know the contour interval. So here, it's not written, but I can. Uh, I can uh, determine this. This one is 200 and this one uh, is 300, right? And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The difference is 100 between this one and that one is going to be divided by 5, which means that the contour uh, interval is 20. So if the contour, contour interval is 20, if this one is 100, right? This one is 100. That means this one is going to be 120, right? And the first depression line is going to be the same as the highest one before it. If this one is 180, also this one is going to be 180. Then we are going to count down. If this one is 120, so this one is going to be 100, right? So again, this one is 100, and the contour interval is 20. Then this one is going to be 120. This one is going to be the same as before, was 120. Then we are going to go down. This one is going to be one. Uh, is going to be 100. Then, since we don't have additional line here, which means that we we have not reached to 80, right? So the height here is going to be between 100 and between 80, right? Because if we reach 80, then uh, another line is going to be drawn here. But because we haven't reached 80, right? We haven't reached 80, so the line has not been drawn. So the minimum elevation is going to be 80 plus 1. In this case, we are going to pretend that we have another line. OK, we are going to pretend that we are going to have uh, another line which is 20, right? Uh, which is 80. If we're going to pretend that we have additional lines, it's going to be uh, 80. Then we are going to add one. It's going to be 81. This is the minimum possible elevation of this de de depression. OK, this is how we identify the minimum possible elevation of a hill or, or, or of a depression. So also we can uh, draw a, contour, a contour profile. Remember, you uh, uh, determine the contour profile is going to help us to visualize a view for the physical feature. 
okay so in order to do that assume here we have the contour lines since we have circular contour uh, lines like this one it's indication that we have uh, a mountain right and when this line close to each other this means this slope is, is steep and this line apart from each other, other uh, indication for uh, gentle uh, slope so in order to draw a profile for a contour line I need to create x and y axis in the y axis we are going to have the height and in x axis we are going to have the distance then I'm going to label the y axis with height the uh, or the numbers here is going to be uh, associated with the uh, height of the uh, contour lines here here we have 10 and here we have 160 then we are going to have 10 and we are going to have 160 and here we have the distance the distance from here to here then we are going to project all of these contours lines so 10 is going to be projected like that and 40 is going to be projected like that and 70 projected like that and 100 like that then we are gonna uh, create points for example here we have 10 and here we have 10 here we, we are going to have our first point here we have 40 and here we have 40 we are going to create the second point and so on then we are going to have a number of points when I'm, I'm going to connect them together then I'm going to have a profile this profile is going to give me a side view for the physical feature so let's uh, try to do this in steps here we have contour line and it's required to draw a profile from point A to point B we need to draw a contour profile the first step I need to create this profile I need to have x and y axis in the uh, uh, y axis we are going to have the height or the elevation and the x in, in, in x axis we are going to have the distance then we are going to uh, try to know the uh, height for each contour so here the height is 900 and here the height is 880 because uh, the uh, contour interval is 20 in this case so I'm going to write the value of contour for each line crosses the AB okay so now uh, I label all the contours lines here like that then I'm gonna put it uh, uh, from A to B so this one is from A to B I'm gonna put it from A to B then since I've done this, I label each and every contour line with uh, uh, their elevation. Then I'm going to project these uh, points or project, project these contour lines like that. After I project these lines like that, then I'm gonna have um, I'm going to make points. So here I have 900, and here I have 900. This is the first point. Here I have 880 and here I have 880. Here the first point, uh, second point. Here I have 860 and here I have 860. This is the third point and so on. Until I finish all the points like that. Okay. Then after I finish these points, I'm going to connect them together. I'm going to connect these points. okay so here since i have 440 and 440 then this one is going to be below uh, 440 but uh, higher than 820 remember in this example the uh, contour interval is 20. okay so i'm going to uh, draw it like that so the uh, profile for this feature is going to be like that which means that we have a valley in this place and here we have a river also we can uh, we can know the direction of the river remember we say that whenever we have contour lines it's going to intersect with the uh, 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 the stream with a v v shape and the v shape indicates in this direction that means the uh, direction of the river is going to be in the opposite direction 
in the north direction in this example. This is how we draw a contour profile. So here, if you have this, also you can draw uh, a contour profile like that using the steps that I have mentioned earlier. Here also, if you have contour like that, you can draw the profile, the side view. So now let's solve example so that we can uh, talk about all the points that I have mentioned for you. So in this example, first we need to know the contour, we need to know the index contours. Remember, we say that the, end, uh, uh, the index contours, usually they are labeled with number and they are bolder and they are darker, okay, and thicker. So in this Tobo map, we have this one, this one labeled with number, and this one also is labeled with number, and they are bolder, thicker, right? So in this example, uh, we have 1000 and 1050. This represent the index contours. Then what is the contour interval in this example? Okay, so I can use this one and that one in order to tell about the contour interval, or I can use this one and that one. Okay, so the difference between this one and that one is 100, or I can use this one and that one. The difference between this one and that one is 500, and here we have five uh, contours lines. So uh, 100 over 5 is going to be like uh, 500 uh, over 5 is going to be 100. So this one is going to be 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400 until 1,500. So the contour line is 100. Then what is the highest possible elevation on the map? So in order to know the highest elevation, the highest elevation is going to be located on a mountain. And since here we have circular contour lines, it's indication for a mountain. And the highest point is going to be located here. So this one is 100, 1,500. This one is going to be 1,600. And I'm going to pretend we have one more. If I'm going to have one more, more it would be 1,700. But since we don't have this number, it's not written here, right? So we are going to subtract 1 from 1,700. So it will be 1,699 units. Okay, is the highest possible elevation. Because here is going to be, the elevation is going to be between 100, 1,600, and 1,700. Also here, what is the lowest possible elevation on the map? Even though here we don't have depression, but we can determine the lowest possible elevation on the map, right? So we are going to look for the lowest number for, for uh, uh, contour. Here, the number of contours are high. Here we have 900. Here we have 800, and this one is going to be 700, right? So I'm going to pretend there is one more. If this one is 700, I'm going to pretend that we are going to have 600, right? And actually, we don't have 600. If 600 existed, they would draw that, right? So we are going to add one in this case. So the lowest possible elevation on the map is going to be 601. Also here he asked about the steepest slope on the map. Remember, also we learn how to identify the slopest steep, uh, steepest slope on the map. When the, the, the contours line close to each other, it's indication for a steep slope. So this place here, this area here is going to be the steepest slope on the map. So this, this area here 
is going to be steepest slope on the map. Also here, where is the flattest slope on the map? When this line apart from each other, it's an indication for a steep slope. So this area here it, it, uh, is going to be, we're going to have a flat slope or gentle slope. Also, we can draw a profile for the line AB. Here we have the line AB. We can draw a profile like I have uh, tell you about it. I need to cut this, label each and every contour line with its number. I need to create X, Y axis. In the Y axis, we're going to have the height and in X axis, we're going to have the distance. And then I need to create points and then connect this point together. And also, I can tell about the distance. For example, what is the distance between C and D? So remember, in the uh, topo map, we are going to have a scale. OK, this one is a bar a scale. So the distance from here to here is one mile. The distance from here to here is six miles. OK, so this one, we can estimate this one to be approximately three miles from here to here. So the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. So we can estimate the distance from C to D to be three miles. Remember, we have map scales and the map scales is the relationship between the distance as measured on a map and the actual distance on the Earth's surface. Here we have this scale and also we have this bar scale. In the scale, it could be variable and it could be bar scale. So this one is a verbal scale. And this one here is a bar scale. OK, so the bar scale, he says that from here to here is one mile and from here to here is half a mile and from here to here tenth of a mile. OK, so from here to here represent one mile. And here we have the ratio scale, the ratio scale like that. OK, we, we, we discussed this. And here we have the bar scale. Also, distance from here to here is one kilometer. Here we have uh, uh, one tenth of a kilometer from here to here. Here we have half kilometer. So this one is a bar scale. Help us to uh, know the distance on the on the map. So I'm going to stop here. So with these nice pictures, here we have a contours line, and here we have 3D representation. So this is good figure, so that we can understand the contours line. The contours lines help us to have the impression of a 3D uh, 3D feature. OK, so we cannot draw this like that. So instead, we have the contours lines and the contours lines help us to imagine the, the third dimension, the, de the dead dimension. Once I see this, I can imagine this. So I'm going to stop here. If you have any 